Hi there and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In the last tech tip I gave you an overview of Hyper-V, Microsoft's built-in hypervisor for Windows 10. In this video I will look at the Hyper-V install requirements. By the end of this video you'll know what is required to get Hyper-V up and running on a Windows 10 system. I'll also show you how to check whether or not a Windows 10 computer meets these requirements. So let's get started. To install the Hyper-V feature on a Windows 10 system, you first need to be running a supported edition of Windows 10. Hyper-V is supported on the following Windows 10 editions. Windows 10 Professional, Windows 10 Enterprise and Windows 10 Education. If you're using Windows 10 Home Edition, you can't install the feature. Furthermore, Hyper-V is only supported on 64-bit versions of Windows 10. You can't install Hyper-V onto any 32-bit versions of Windows 10. Understand, if you are running a supported edition of Windows 10, if that edition is using a 32-bit architecture, Hyper-V cannot be installed. Although Hyper-V itself can only be installed onto 64-bit versions of Windows 10, it is possible to run both 32-bit and 64-bit operating systems as virtual machines. Next, you need to ensure that the computer has at least 4 GB of RAM memory installed. It's worth noting at this point that it is possible to install Hyper-V even if the system has less than 4 GB of RAM. So why does Microsoft ask for 4 GB of RAM? To understand why, consider the following scenario. Imagine that you have a computer running a 64-bit version of Windows 10 Professional. This computer has 3 GB of RAM and therefore doesn't quite meet the memory requirements for Hyper-V. According to Microsoft, computers running 64-bit versions of Windows 10 require at least 2 GB of RAM to run effectively. This means that when the operating system is installed, two-thirds of the RAM available is immediately allocated. This RAM is needed to simply keep the computer alive. This leaves us with 1 GB of RAM which can be used for applications. Let's then say that the administrator installs Hyper-V and creates a virtual machine. This virtual machine needs its own operating system and RAM. The administrator decides to install Windows 10 onto the virtual machine. Remember, 64-bit versions of Windows 10 require at least 2 GB of RAM. Since this computer only has 1 GB of RAM left, installing a 64-bit operating system is not an option. There simply isn't enough RAM. However, 32-bit versions of Windows 10 require at least 1 GB of RAM. So the administrator installs a 32-bit version of Windows 10 and allocates the last remaining GB of RAM to the virtual machine. Notice what has happened. All of the available memory in the host system has been used up. Although both operating systems are in fact running, there is no or very little memory left to run applications. As a result, performance on both systems is likely to be poor. Let's then say the administrator adds an extra gigabyte of RAM to the host computer, taking the total amount of RAM to 4 gigabytes. Although not very much, this extra gigabyte would at least allow some memory space for applications to run. This is why Microsoft considers 4 GB of RAM an absolute minimum for Hyper-V. The next requirement is a processor which supports SLAT, or Second Level Address Translation. Second Level Address Translation, in a nutshell, is a feature that is designed to reduce the amount of overhead generated from the hypervisor. Remember, Hyper-V is a hypervisor that runs at the operating system level. And, just like an operating system, the hypervisor requires resources such as CPU and RAM in order to work. By reducing the overhead of the hypervisor, more resources in the computer are essentially freed up for your virtual machines. Second-level address translation is supported by the majority of modern-day processors. Depending on your processor manufacturer and which literature you read, you could find that SLAT is referred to in different ways. Intel, for example, calls their implementation of SLAT Extended Page Table or EPT. Meanwhile, AMD refers to the technology as Rapid Virtualization Indexing or RVI. The last requirement I will look at is Hardware Assisted Virtualization. 
For Hyper-V in Windows 10, hardware-assisted virtualization is required at the BIOS or UEFI firmware level. In other words, the computer must have a BIOS or UEFI firmware which supports hardware-assisted virtualization. Hardware-assisted virtualization is a feature that essentially fools a virtual machine into thinking it's running on actual hardware rather than software. On some computers, hardware-assisted virtualization is not enabled by default. As a result, the administrator will have to go into the BIOS or UEFI firmware and enable the feature manually. Depending on your BIOS or UEFI vendor, the hardware-assisted virtualization option could be listed differently. Some of the more common listings for hardware-assisted virtualization that I personally have found include Virtualization Technology Virtualization Technology VTX Virtualization Technology VTX forward slash VTD and AMDV Now that all of the requirements are covered, I'll now change over to my Windows 10 computer. On this computer, I'll show you how to quickly check whether or not the system actually meets the requirements of Hyper-V. First, I'll click the Start button. On the search bar at the bottom, I'll then type the letters CMD. From the search results, I will then select Command Prompt. This opens a Command Prompt window. At the prompt, I will enter the command System Info and will then press Enter. After a short wait, Windows 10 will gather all of the key information for your system and will display it to you in a report. Using this report, you can determine straight away whether or not this computer will support Hyper-V. At the top of the report, notice the heading OS Name. As you can see, the operating system installed on this computer is, in fact, Windows 10 Professional. Further down, notice the heading System Type. In my case, this is reporting 64-bit based PC. Straight away, I can see that my operating system edition and architecture will both support Hyper-V. The next heading you should look at is Total Physical Memory. This is essentially the amount of RAM installed in the computer. As you can see, this computer has over 8,000 MB of RAM memory, which is approximately 8 GB. Since Hyper-V requires just 4 GB, this is more than enough. Finally, if I scroll down to the bottom of the report, notice the heading Hyper-V Requirements. This section looks at the hardware in your computer, such as the processor and boot firmware, to make sure it's compatible with Hyper-V. The first subheading you should look at is Virtualization Enabled in Firmware. This is essentially the hardware-assisted virtualization requirement I mentioned earlier. The report will give you a simple value of yes or no. If the value is yes, then hardware-assisted virtualization is already enabled on your system. If the value is no, the administrator will have to go into the computer's BIOS or UEFI firmware and enable the option. In my case, this value is already reporting yes, so I'll move on. Beneath this, notice the subheading Second Level Address Translation. Again, the report will give you either a yes or no value. In my case, this value is also yes, meaning that the processor in this computer fully supports second level address translation. Therefore, I can safely say that this computer fully meets the install requirements for Hyper-V. This concludes our look at the Hyper-V install requirements. In the next video, I'll perform an actual install of the Hyper-V feature on my own Windows 10 computer. I hope that you've enjoyed this video from Tech Tips from Will. For more videos, check out our YouTube channel. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next Tech Tip.